What is going on YouTube Edged Mindset here? Got another video for you. Now I want to caveat this video with a couple of things that you probably don't care about. I'm in a little bit of a rough spot in my life right now. I'm probably going to shoot a video addressing that after this one, but I just wanted to get this video done. Um, there's something I wanted to talk about with this knife. I have yet to feature it on my channel. I don't know if I'm going to be able to keep this thing, um, but I wanted to talk about it. And there's something that's been brewing in the old brain for a little bit now. So for those that are new to the knife world, you may have heard the term grail thrown around here or there. Or if you're just new to kind of collecting hobbies in general, there's the concept of the grail. Now, what is the grail? In general terms, the grail is just some item that you are seeking. And it could be that this item is kind of rare. It's hard to get. It's hard to find. Could be very expensive. Could be a combination of the both of those things. It could also be just, you know, something that's maybe special to you and not special to other people. It could be very personal. It could be your grandpa's old hunting knife that you lost and your grail is to try and find it. Maybe you know it's on his property or in his house and your grail is to find that knife that maybe you grew up with. Like it's it's kind of different for everybody, but it's thrown about thrown around very lightly in the knife community quite often, right? In fact, it's it's gotten pretty watered down to the point where it's really just whatever somebody wants to get next. You know, and it's different for everybody. Some people's grails are really something that will take years to try to get a hold of. Some people it's just what they're looking for to buy in the next couple of weeks. Um, but it kind of got me thinking what what is a true grail because I've thrown that word around a lot. Um, I've said it a lot for different knives I've wanted and, and different things. I, I try to take it pretty serious. You know, I, I try to make it something that has been on my radar, been something I've been after for a long time, but it wasn't until I got this knife that I can kind of definitively say that for me, this is a true grail. Uh, this is a true grail for me. This is a custom Andrew Demko A. D10. Um, and it's not just that it's a custom AD10 that makes it a grail. It's this specific configuration and it's the year that this came out and it's bigger than just the knife. Cause I know some of you and, and why I hesitated to make this video, I've had this knife for a while. Uh, why I've hesitated to make this video is I know this isn't going to resonate with people. They're going to see this thing and say, why would this be a grail for you. There's there's nothing going on. This isn't really a modern design. Um, it doesn't have fancy titanium milling. It's very industrial looking, like a lot of Demco designs are. It's got the triad lock, which makes you think of cold steel, which a lot of people think of cheap and cheesy. Um, so for a lot of people, this isn't really going to make sense to even call this a grail. But I want to explain why I think it is and why it is for me. Part of it is um, when this came out, so this came out, I, I can't get an exact year that this was made. Unfortunately, the blade steel or the year is not marked anywhere on the knife and it didn't have a COA or anything like that. But based on my research and reaching out to people very familiar with his work and the types of pivots and the types of materials he used at that time, this is looking like it's a 2014 to maybe 2016-ish type year. Um, and that was the big year for me and knives. That's kind of when I really discovered knives, especially custom knives. And this was, for some reason, and I've mentioned this before, you've seen this in other videos, the, the peel ply carbon fiber. This was the first time I'd ever seen it used. And I really loved the 8010. I really loved the triad lock and I really loved Andrew Demko's designs. Uh, it's not over the top. It's not super artsy. It's not super creative. It's not super... Uh, detail oriented. It's very industrial, but it has a certain presence to it in simplicity that really resonated with me. Um, I was really obsessed with getting the strongest lock imaginable, which at the time and still is, is the triad lock. And so a custom 8010 was my ultimate grail at that time. And in particular was this peel pie, peel ply carbon fiber version. I saw this and it was just everything for me. I mean, it was it was the knife. It was the custom knife that I wanted above all. Um, now, I came close to being able to pick up a custom Demco. It wasn't this one. Uh, I almost got a custom 4Max from him. 
but this one always eluded me. And at the time, I didn't have a lot of money. Uh, <laughs> coincidentally, due to recent events, I don't now either. But when I bought this, I did have excess money and I was able to get it. And I'm very glad I was able to experience it, even if I can't keep it. Um, but at the time, back in 2015-ish, um, I was young in my career. I was starting a family. You know, I was able to get some custom knives, but I had to be very careful with the ones that I got, and I was never able to really keep them. I could only pick them up for a short time, do some content, uh, get to experience them, and then I had to let them go. Uh, so I was never able to get my custom 8010. And I just, I never thought it would happen because um, I knew Andrew didn't like making this knife. He didn't like doing custom triad locks because it was very difficult. There's also certain uh, legal things involved with him being an employee of Colt Steel that prevented the amount he could make. And then he moved on to the Scorpion lock and he moved on to the Shark lock. And I just didn't think I would be able to get a custom 8010. I found out that he did continue to produce custom 8010s. Uh, usually all tie is the most common, but he did a lot of contoured ones, and I, I just never liked those as much as the flat peel ply carbon fiber. And this is just me. I'm not trying to convince you that this is some pinnacle of knife design. For some reason, this just clicked for me. Um, I just loved the way it looked. I thought it was amazing, um, and I always wanted one. And I came across one on eBay, this one, in mint condition, from the year that this knife meant the most to me, from the year that my life um, was really kind of growing and I was becoming the person that I was becoming. I had a couple of young kids. I was working on my career. Um, it, was a very, it was a very good time in my life with a lot of growth and change. And so being able to pick this up, and the reason why I'm considering this a true grail is because it's above and beyond the maker, the knife, the cost, the price, the way it looks. This represents a time in my life that I hold very, very dear. And being able to have a physical representation of that time uh, means a lot to me. And I, you know, so for me, that is that is true grail status. And like I said, I've I've thrown that word around a lot. You know, really it's any time there's a knife that I that I like a lot, or a knife that I wish I had gotten back in the day and wasn't able to, I kind of use that term, but I, I think I'm going to change that. Um, I think I'm going to be more selective with the term grail, and uh, this one fits into that category, hands down. And I think everybody should kind of think of it that way. You know, um, things are important not because of how expensive they are, or how rare they are. They're important because of what they mean to us, right? And especially when we're talking about things as frivolous as physical objects, like a pocket knife, that isn't really needed, um, it's that connection that kind of makes it valuable, right? When I look at this knife, I think of that time in my life, not necessarily just the object itself. I mean, I, I do really like the object, but I think of just me in that age, you know, what I was into, what I was excited about. I was, I was my YouTube channel was just kicking off around that time. I'd started it previous, but that's when it was really kind of getting some swing and I, I it just felt kind of cool and magical in the knife community as well as my personal life and so this is a good representation of that my goal is to keep this one I, I don't know if that's going to be possible the next few months will kind of dictate the likelihood of that um, because I paid way too much for it on eBay I just knew I could find another 8010 I I just didn't think I would find this 8010 this is specific um, from a time that I, that I care about. So comment down below what you, what your opinion, sorry, what your opinion of, um, grails are. Do they match mine or do you have a different interpretation of grails? All right, guys, that's it. 8010 custom peel ply carbon fiber. Talk to you guys later. See you in the next video.